Role of Ethylene in Plants Dicotyledons usually inhibit the elongation of stems and roots, enhance radial expansion of the cells causing thickness, leave seen sins, and stimulate the formation of adventitious roots as in tomato. 1. Seed germination A hook in the epicotyl or the hypocotyl is formed shortly after germination in response to endogenous ethylene, which pushes through the soil and makes a hole through which the cotyledons or young leaves can be safely drawn. If the soil is excessively compact, the hook and primary root become unusually thick because of ethylene synthesis when the compacted cells are subjected to increased mechanical pressure and because the ethylene escapes less rapidly in compacted than in loose soils. 2. Internode thickening in cereal grains match and oat, ethylene effects on the mesocotyl, the first internode, similar to that of dicot stems, inhibiting elongation and increasing thickness. 3. Post-pollination, the release of auxin by germinating pollen grains promotes ethylene production in the stigma, which contributes to the senescence of the flower. 4. Rapid elongation in submerged plants so that the leaves and upper stem parts are kept above the water surface. Submergence causes ethylene accumulation in the stems, which is responsible for the rapid elongation. 5. Generally in submerged plants chlorosis of leaves, decreased stem elongation but increased stem thickness, wilting, epinasty, and eventual abscission of leaves, Decreased root elongation often accompanied by adventitious root formation and increased susceptibility to pathogens. 6. Erenchyma formation Ethylene in submerged plants causes some of the cortical cells to synthesize cellulase, an enzyme that is partly responsible for degrading their cell walls causing the loss of their protoplasm and formation of effilled erenchyma tissues. 7. An extreme case of epinasty of the petioles occurs because mature parenchyma cells on the upper side of the petiole elongate in the presence of ethylene wear whereas those on the lower side do not. 8. Flowering in mangoes, bromeliads and pineapple flowers faster and, more importantly, mature fruits appear uniformly, the goal being to allow a one-harvest mechanical operation. Chemistry Synthesis it is derived from 3 and 4 carbons of the amino acid methionine. This pathway emphasizes how the sulfur atom of methionine can be conserved by a cyclic salvage process. Later amino acid-like compound, 1-aminocyclopropane-1-carboxylic acid, ACC, is a close precursor of ethylene. Several other reactions pathway for ethylene formation are known. Other notable features are 1. ATP is essential to convert methionine to sadeno-methionine, SAM, and oxygen is needed in the final conversion of ACC to ethylene. 2. Wounding also increases ethylene production. 3.3 In perclimacteric avocado fruits, the concentration of ACC rose from near 0 to over 40 nanomole g of fruit tissue just before a burst of ethylene synthesis occurred, followed by ripening soon. 4. A curious autocatalytic ability of ethylene to stimulate its formation occurs in many senescent organs, including leaves, flower petals, and overripened fruits. 5. Besides oxygen, factors affecting ethylene synthesis are light and carbon dioxide. A. Light inhibits synthesis. B. Carbon dioxide promotes synthesis. Inactivation Two potent inhibitors of ethylene synthesis have been discovered. These compounds are amino ethoxy vinyl glycine, average, and amino oxy acetic acid, AOA, the well known inhibitors of enzymes that require pyridoxal phosphate as a coenzyme. Transport and place of synthesis they are synthesized in leaf, stem, flower, and fruit, and hence need no transportation. Mode of action Many ethylene effects are accomplished by an increase in the synthesis of enzymes, depending on the target tissue. When ethylene stimulates leaf abscission, cellulase and other cell wall degrading enzymes appear in the abscission layer. When fruit ripening occurs, necessary enzymes are produced in the fruit cells. In injured cell phenylalanine ammonia lyase appears, an enzyme in the formation of phenolic compounds involved in wound healing.